All right, lesson 5.7, interpreting graphs of linear functions. This is the last uh, lesson of unit five on uh, functions and relations. Specifically, we're gonna look at uh, different graphs and how to pull out information from them. So any graph of a line that is not vertical represents a function. We call these functions linear functions. Each graph below shows the temperature t degrees Celsius as a function of time t hours for two locations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at these two graphs and we're going to try to pull out some information that we see from both of these. I'm going to do the one on the, uh, the left hand side first and then I'll mosey on to the right hand side. So what we see here is we have uh, the temperature um, graphed across time uh, for two different locations. Location A right away you can see that the uh, temperature is rising whereas in B it's decreasing. Uh, so, let's uh, try and answer these uh, different questions that they have for here. It says, uh, the point where the graph intersects the horizontal axis is, well, we see it, or it uh, intersects right here at 4, 0. So this would be the order pair 4, 0. The horizontal intercept is at 4. What does this mean? This means at 4 hours, the temperature is 0 degrees. Now what can we say about the point where the graph intersects the vertical axis? So that would be this point right here. It's at, uh, looks to be at, what's that, 0, negative 5. That means we have a vertical intercept at negative 5. What does that point mean? Well that means that the initial temperature, right, at time 0 is negative 5. Let's investigate this in terms of our domain and range. Notice that the domain here, normally our x, uh, in this circumstance is t for time. So I'm going to use little t to represent time. And the range, normally our y, is going to be capital T, I'll use for temperature. So we need to think of um, what possible time uh, times do we have here. The most maximum time we have is 12. And our minimum time we have is 0. So we say it can be anything between 12 and 0. In terms of temperature here, for the domain, while well, the maximum temperature we have looks to be 10, and the minimum temperature we have looks to be negative 5. Okay. Now, in terms of rate of change, the information that I'm going to use for rate of change is this highlighted region here and here. They tell you that the temperature over the course of um, four hours has gone down five degrees. So the rate of change I will use will be we have five degrees Celsius, that's how much it's changed in four hours. And so what can we say? Well, we can say when you finish dividing those that we have um, 1.25 degrees Celsius. That's how much the time has changed in one hour. Okay. Let's look at the next one here. What you should be able to assume is that right away the rate of change is going to be different, right? It should be negative because the, uh, the temperature is decreasing here. So uh, you might want to try this side yourself to make sure you can pull out the right information and then uh, just fast forward and check it versus mine. So the point where the graph intersects the horizontal axis for this one would be at that point right there, and that is at 5, 0. So the horizontal axis is at 5, and what does that mean? That means uh, after 5 hours, or at 5 hours, the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, what do we know about the vertical axis? Well, it looks to be at 0, 10 right here. So that means we have a y-intercept or a vertical intercept at 10. And the point of intersection, what does that mean? It means the initial temperature on this side at location B is uh, 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. The domain. Well, remember domain again is talking about time. Range is temperature. What possible times do we have here? It looks like it goes from 0 to 10. So we will say that the maximum time is 10 hours and the minimum time is zero hours. And in terms of temperature, my maximum temperature is 10 degrees. My minimum temperature is negative 10 degrees. Now the rate of change, again, they've done that calculation nicely right here for us. So we can see that over the course of five hours, the temperature has gone down 10 degrees. So we will take always our, uh, sorry, our dependent goes first. So we have negative 10 degrees Celsius over five hours. And we divide that, we end up getting, of course, negative two degrees Celsius per hour. So that's how much the temperature is dropping by in, uh, in that question. Okay, on the next page, we can use intercepts to graph a linear function. So that's kind of what we were just worried about on the last page there as we were trying to... Uh... 
Okay, the next page here. We can use intercepts to graph a linear function. So if you recall on the last page, we were talking about specifically the x and y intercepts. So I'm doing that for a reason so that now you can see we can use those points to uh, help ourselves graph. So to determine the y-intercept, find the value of y when x equals 0. So if you just substitute 0 in, you will always have the y-intercept. So what you need to do then is, um, that is, evaluate f of x when x is equal to 0, or you can think of it as when you put in f of 0. When you're looking for the x-intercept, then you always substitute 0 in for the opposite thing. So I'm going to substitute 0 in for y. And so that means that uh, is, is to determine the value of x when f of x equals 0. So we're going to try it for uh, this linear relation that we have right here. The function is f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 7. And so let's first try and figure out what the y-intercept is. So the y-intercept is when you substitute in x equals 0. So therefore I'm going to be looking for this, once I have substitute, so f of uh, 0 is equal to negative 2 times 0 plus 7. This tells me that my y-intercept is at 7. Now if you want here, you do not have to write as f of 0. You could have changed this initially just to be y equals. Because really when they have f of x, I want you to think that that really means y. Okay? So when you go and graph this as an ordered pair, it's really the ordered pair 0, 7 right here. And so that would be up 7, so 2, 4, six, seven, like so. We'd have that first dot. And now let's go and find the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, I'm just going to do the opposite. I'm going to substitute in y equals zero. Okay. So this time I will have zero is equal to negative two x plus seven. And now I need to rearrange for x. I'll move the seven to the other side. It becomes a negative seven. To get the x by itself then, I need to divide by negative two. And we get x is equal to 3.5, or you could leave it as 7 over 2. So let's approximately put where 3.5 would be, like so. And since you have those two points now, you can get your straight edge out, and you have your graph. Okay. Last example 2 here. It says, which graph has a rate of change of 1 half and a vertical intercept of 6? So let's go take a look. What I will do first is let's go and try and figure out the rate of change for each one. And I've shown you um, a couple ways to do rate of change, but I haven't shown you this one. And this one's going to tie into next unit really well, so that's why I thought I'd maybe give you a little bit of a preview. You can also think of rate of change in terms of rise over run. All right, and so we're specifically going to call this slope in next unit. If I take these two points right here, Notice to get from the point on the left-hand side to the point on the right-hand side, I'd have to, when they talk about rise, I would actually have to fall to right here. So I'd have to go down to right to there, and then across 4. So in terms of rise, I'm actually going to drop 2. So that's why I write it as a negative 2. And run, how many do I have to run in the positive direction? I run 4. When I reduce that, I have a rate of change of negative 1 half, or negative 0.5. Let's try it over here. I'll just take these two points this time. So in terms of rate of change, I find that in this circumstance, I actually, in order to get from this point to this point, I need to rise two units. And I'm still running four, but in this circumstance, I get a uh, rate of change, or sometimes called a slope, that's what I was going to say, of one half. So which graph has a rate of change of one half and a vertical intercept of six? Well, actually, both have vertical intercepts of six, right? That's at six, and that's at six right there. But the graph that, ha that meets kind of this condition right here would be B. Okay, so this graph would be the one that... Uh, Satisfies those conditions. So what did we learn in this lesson? We learned that basically you can uh, interpret quite, quite a bit of things just by looking at a graph. You can get the rate of change, you can get the domain and range, you can get the intercepts. And uh, on the back page here we also looked at um, when you find the intercepts that gives you enough information to go ahead and uh, graph a 